How you doing, Manginas? Angry Toddler here, bringing you guys TDM on Black Box, and welcome to Girlfriend's... I about said girlfriend really weird. Welcome to Girlfriend Story number four, Quattro. Quattro. Quattro, I think. <laughs> Shit, I'm stupid. Um, so last time we left off, I was talking about my stalker with Down Syndrome, and yeah. So, here's the rest of the stories about that before I get into two, gir two, two Girls, One Cup. Before I get into Two Girls, One Cup, when I dated them. Uh, until I get into two girls, two years too long, if I can fucking say it right. Anyway, so, stories with, uh, K Casey. With Casey. Um, so, like I said, it continued. And it didn't just continue for a long time. It continued for a very, very, very long time. And, um, she followed me all around all my classes. And some of the highlights were that she would follow me around in my classes, but also cheerlead for me at the same time. And what I mean by cheerleading is here's how here's what she would say. Go. Go Ryan. Go Ryan. You're number one. And she'd do high kicks. And she was pretty good at high kicks at the stage. She, I mean it wasn't bad. I wasn't checking it out or anything. Okay? God damn it, I sound like a perv when I'm telling these stories. But yeah, she'd do high kicks, she would cheerlead, clap her hands like that. And it was embarrassing. I have to say it was embarrassing. People understood. But it's one of those things I don't want to be known as somebody I don't want to be known as Casey's boyfriend because everybody messed around with me about that They're like where's your girlfriend at I was like hey thanks for ruining me man hurts my feelings so and then also at lunch this is the weirdest part well at lunch was always the worst time I would try I there was some times where I would just not go to lunch I would actually just go to go somewhere else and avoid her because I mean it was really exhausting is what it was because she would scream and yell at me if I didn't tell her what she wanted or do what she wanted as in follow her to class and stuff. And I'm trying to like not ruin this girl's life by leading her on. Because I think it would have been terrible for me to pretend to be her boyfriend. Because that just, I feel like that's not her growing up in this world and being, um, she wouldn't be able to understand the real life. And I'm sure people would take advantage of that future on. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to be a good person at the same time being really nice about it and not trying to hurt her feelings and stuff. So it was really hard. It just got really exhausting having to deal with this while dealing with school, while trying to... I mean, high school is a tough time trying to be find out who you are uh, as a person. And that really just got really deep here. I don't think you guys were expecting that, were you? <laughs> I'm a multitasker. Just ask your mother. So she... um, What the fuck was I even talking about right before then? Um, shit. I don't remember. Anyways, I'll say another story then, I guess. Oh, hold on. Let me let me go. Sorry, I had to stop the commentary to go check out what I was talking about. But I remember. So at lunchrooms, she would, um, she, first of all, she would say a lot of stuff. Like, she told stories about how I went to her house, and we were jumping on her bed, and she would say, go Ryan. No, she was saying that I said, go Casey, you're number one. So, yeah. She said that, and that wasn't very funny because my friends would make fun of me about the words jumping on her bed. So that was cool. And then she would also play this game where she would call me. And she wouldn't have a phone. I think she actually did have a cell phone, but you know how you put your hands up to your to your face and pretend it's a phone? That's what she would do. And this is funny because she would call me with her little hand phone and be like, Hey, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. I was like, yeah, what, Casey? She's like, pick it up. I was like, all right. So I picked it up. I'm like, hello, and pretending to talk. And she thought, I don't know why, but she thought that um, I could hear her because then she would turn around and face the other way and start talking to the phone. And so then she'd look back again. I don't have the phone up to my ear. She's like, Ryan, you're not talking to me on the phone. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is going to get old. And it did very fast. <laughs> Um, and just to try to sum up all these stories really fast because I don't want to make three separate videos about this one situation. Um, she gave me a, uh, present, which happened to be a $30, um, bracelet. And I think her mother bought it for her. So I felt really bad. I always tried to give it back to her, but she always remembered that she gave it to me so she'd never take it back. I'm not sure where it is anymore. But I felt weird if I would have kept it. I think I gave it to a friend. I'm like, hey, dude, I don't want this. This would be really weird if I kept it. And that's how I felt about that. So then she used to write me notes with hands, and she'd draw pictures of me and her holding hands. Um, and the best part was the notes were on back of grocery list most of the time. The creepiest note of all time 
was one she typed up. It was four pages long, stapled, and then with crayon she signed it, Love Casey. And it's not like it was typed as saying anything. It was typed as if you kept hitting your hands on the keyboard and getting random letters. So that that was weird. That would creep me out a little bit. Um, I, cause I didn't know what, what, you know what I mean? She, she was trying to say something with this keyboard, and I don't know if it was a death threat. She could have been threatening me. She had before. She had hit me with her purse before. <laughs> I'm not kidding about that either. Uh, she had hit me with her purse before because I wouldn't follow her to class. And then, um, there's one time. This is the most awkward situation of my life. Thanks to my friend, Tyler. Way to go, buddy. But she followed me in my class. I sat in my class and pretend to ignore her because this was four months into the process. And by the way, I told her teachers about it. And all her teacher said was, oh, she must think you're cute. And kept her out of lunch for two days. She, they didn't do shit about it. So, I had to deal with it myself. So she followed me to this class, my history class, and I was sitting there reading because I was trying to ignore her and pretend like I didn't see her. And then finally, she just staring at me through the doorway, and my friend Tyler was like, Hey, Ryan! Ryan! Casey's waiting for you! Casey's trying to talk to you! I'm like, fuck you, Tyler! And so I look at her, I'm like, what do you want, Casey? And she just goes, Wah! She screams on top of her lungs, and then runs away. And... It just got awkwardly silent. And then Tyler was... It was awkwardly silent. Nobody was talking. Tyler just goes, You're a jerk, Ryan! And I'm like, Oh my god. But it was hilarious. It was hilarious thinking about it now. It was really funny. But it wasn't at the time. Um, there's there's more stories about it. She told her whole course class that I was a good kisser. So that started a lot of rumors. Thanks, Casey. <laughs> so next time, um, I'm going to be talking about my two-year-long girlfriend. I have plenty of stories about her. I'm sure that will last probably two episodes. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this commentary and stuff. Um, I think it's kind of fun reliving these moments because you see me laughing probably just as much as you guys are, if not a lot more. You guys probably think these stories suck. Um, 39.3 I think I go. I can't see it. My thing's in the way, if you know what I mean. Stay hairy, manginas.